Welcome to the Potter Blanc site, October 27, 2013. The only thing we can say about this next one, wow. The Centers for Disease Control just put a notice in the Federal Register on Friday, and they always put the important things in there on Friday so the media doesn't cover it. They're creating a new division to control state and local pandemic response. The, ostensibly, this is uh, directed towards the H7N9 uh, flu pandemic that the United States government has been in doomsday prepping mode for. But uh, let's just look at this real quick. You know, uh, sounds rather innocuous. Statements of organization, functions, and delegations of authority, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, released October 25th, 2013. So let's scroll down to it and I'll show you exactly what they changed in their mission statement, if you will. Uh, they added this line, item number three, and then they created a whole new division in support of it. Looks like it's going to be a thousand uh, commissioned officers in the public health uh, corps to support this, but we'll get into that in a second. I'll just read it for you. Three, the uh, state and local division uh, works with awardees to advance state and local preparedness efforts through placement of CDC field staff within state and local public health agencies. So you're going to have the feds buried deep down in, to even to your local health agency. Now let's look at the new division that they've created for this. It is called the Field Services Branch and it's under the Division of State and Local Readiness. Field Services Branch right here. Now, we'll have a link to this on our website. You can go through it. Here's some key things. Uh, contributes as leaders in preparedness and epidemiology for issues including clinical surge capacity, hospital preparedness, and influenza response planning. The reason they need this is because for people who seek hospital treatment for H7N9 uh, hemorrhagic bird flu, if they don't get on advanced life support, there's a 100% death rate. And there is a very limited quantity of advanced life support equipment available. And as we've documented earlier, if they can delay two days these people get into the hospital, it will greatly minimize the flood of people going into the hospital because these people will die out before they can spend 90 to 120 days in ICU. But uh, back to the subject on hand here. So they've got this whole new division here uh, for state and local people. Now, about two weeks ago, uh, we tweeted about this. And they also released on October 1st, guidance for temporary reassignment of state and local personnel during a public health emergency. Basically what it means is the CDC can federalize uh, state and local health care public health employees and bring them in under their federal wing. Very concerning in and of itself. So, of course, if you're going to create a new agency or a new division within the CDC, you need to man it. Well, if you need to man a new division within the CDC, you also need to ask these people questions. And you have to do background checks. So when you do that, you have to put a notice in the Federal Register. Agency information collection activities, submission to OMB for review and approval, public comment request. Uh, they want an answer to this by November 25th. In essence, what this is, is they're, they're explaining to the Office of Management and Budget uh, what type of burden this is going to be. Let me zoom this up. Uh, for the uh, Commissioned Corps of the U.S. Public Health. And what they're doing here is, is they've got these questionnaires and they're going to run back check, background checks on people applying for jobs into the uh, Commission Corps of Public Health. And you may not know what that is, but uh, there's a reason the Surgeon General is called a general. And that is because uh, this is actually set up like a military command. So here's their estimated economic burden of this reporting requirements. And while we won't go into full detail of it, uh, they're going to interview 8,000 people. Out of those 8,000 people, they're planning on hiring 1,000 people for the uh, United States Public Health Corps. 
Wow, you haven't heard anything about that, have you? You know, there's, there's only about 6,000 people in the public health corps as it is now, so they're going to add 1,000, and it looks like they're going to try to add them relatively quickly. Now, if you, if you saw that, you would think, well, well, maybe, wouldn't they put a notice out there hiring? Well, here they have. U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corp Opportunities. Best kit secrets. Who we are. There's this whole flyer out that they just released. And we'll have a link to this on our website, too. Where they describe what they do and why you should come work for them. Why you should become a commissioned officer in the United States Public Health Corps. There is an ungodly amount of preparedness going on by the United States government for an H7N9 bird flu pandemic. Yeah, it, that's the concerning thing. Our own opinion is the risk is low in 2013 of this occurring, but the amount of money and effort they're spending on this is utterly incredible. And it, it, just watch your previous videos. They've got a new 211 telephone line set up so you can call in and uh, get uh, health care and prescriptions for bird flu without going into the hospital. They've upped their capability for the CDC to do live emergency broadcasts from their command center to the whole nation. They're setting out to give every person in the United States two shots of a experimental virus, adjuvant, uh, experimental vaccine that's uh, uh, laden with adjuvants. Uh, they've ordered 600 million syringes for this. And again, we have all these links available. It's just an incredible amount of effort. Now, the H7N9 pandemic may be the, the, you know, the nose of the camel under the tent. There's a lot broader implications for this and where health care is going. And we're going away from private health care where it's between you and your doctor. What we're going to is a uh, basically an agribusiness farm a veterinarian health care system uh, where they treat the herd instead of the individual. Now, the key with making a system like that successful, in, at least in the mind of the people paying to take care of the herd, is to make every member of the herd believe that they're a prized heifer. You know, if we are really going into one messed up system of the health care. Throw the pandemic on top of this, and you just see the opportunities for nationalization and federalization going on here.